Hopefully by now we've done a few examples and you can understand how we actually get this bootstrap distribution and why we want the bootstrap distribution. So remember why we want it is because it approximates the sampling distribution of theta hat. So if we plot out our bootstrap distribution, maybe it looks like this. So here's our histogram. We have frequency on the y-axis. We have theta hat, our estimator, on the x-axis, and then maybe like one, two, three, whatever the numbers are. Um, so this is approximating our sampling distribution of theta hat. It's interesting to look at a couple characteristics of this sampling distribution approximation, and we'll talk about the characteristics of center, spread, and skew. All right, so when we look at a histogram, we're often wondering like where the center of the histogram is. So in this case, we're wondering, does the center of our bootstrap distribution correspond with the center of our sampling distribution for theta hat? And the answer is actually no. The center of our bootstrap distribution is going to be approximately the theta hat of our original sample. So it's centered at the It's centered at the theta hat of our original sample. In other words, it is not centered at theta. And this is notable because our sampling distribution of theta hat is centered at theta. assuming that we have an unbiased estimator. All right, how about spread? Does the spread of the bootstrap distribution approximate the spread of the sampling distribution? And the answer for that is yes. All right, next one, skew. Does the skew of the sampling distribution of theta, can that be approximated by the skew of the bootstrap distribution of theta hat? The answer for that one is also yes. So if we end up plotting our bootstrap distribution and it looks pretty skewed, maybe something like that, then we can know that the sampling distribution of theta hat is also going to be pretty skewed. So when we see something like this that can make us feel um, validated in our decision to do bootstrapping rather than assuming normality of theta hat. So remember those confidence intervals that we talked about when we had like theta hat, or like the sample mean plus or minus z alpha over two times the standard error. That all revolved around having a normally um, distributed sample mean. But if we see something like this, then we know that the um, sample size is not large enough for the central limit theorem to have kicked in. And so if we know that the central limit theorem has not kicked in because we've looked at this bootstrap distribution and we, and we see a good amount of skew, then we know that the sampling distribution um, of theta hat has a good amount of skew and so we should not be relying on um, theta hat having a normal distribution. All right, so in other words, we should not be using this bootstrap distribution to try to get a better estimate of theta. Our best estimate of theta is actually the original sample's theta hat. But if we want to get a good idea of the spread or the skew, we can go ahead and do that. And one more thing, the standard deviation of these bootstrap theta hats is approximating the standard error of theta hat. So in other words, like remember when we were talking about the sample mean or the sample proportion, 
if we wanted to approximate the standard error of that sample mean or the um, standard error of the sample proportion, we could do that by doing this bootstrap stuff. <laughs>